Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with our miniature, we're going to use some Rekarth Flesh, and we're going to use that to paint up our... Uh, skin tone here. So Rekarth Flesh is a very uh, grayish skin tone and I thought it'd be different to uh, switch it up from the usual uh, very generic sort of flesh colors I have since Asimar are angelic like beings. So I thought switching the skin tone up a little bit would add a little bit more interest to the model. And of course it's just a matter of going around and checking out where our skin is and just painting that over with the Rekarth Flesh. Okay, then once we have the skin all base coated, we're going to come in now with some Grimoire Purple. And our Grimoire Purple we're going to be using for the base colour of her robes here, which is uh, pretty much the undermost layer. Maybe a little bit hard to see on camera, but there's um, a few things on top of her robes here. She's got a lot of belts and other sort of fancy bits. So we just want to aim for pretty much the undermost layer for our Grimoire Purple. And being careful to not get it where you don't want it as well. Then once we have that base layer of Grimoire Purple down, we're going to come in with Alien Purple now, which is an even more intense purple. And we're going to be using this for the trim. And there's also another little part to a robe, which is sort of like a over skirt, I guess. Um, which we also want to be doing with the Alien Purple as well. Just give it some of those nice edges and highlights and really help the purple stand out and give it a bit more of a flashy sort of look so it's just a matter of going around finding where all that trim and stuff is on the miniature then once we have that trim picked out we're going to come in now with some black gray and for the black gray what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be uh, picking out the belt across her um, waist there as well as that we also want to be painting up her uh, boots as well now she does have some leather straps on the boots so we want to be trying to avoid those but they are close together and we're we're still in the base coating stage, so we don't have to worry about that too much. As long as we get that belt with a small point on our brush and we can really get in there and making sure we cover those boots. And then once we have those details picked out, we're going to come in now with some burnt umber. And for our burnt umber, we're just going to be using it on some leather parts of the miniature here. So we're going to be using it on the sheath of the sword she actually has on her waist, uh, as well as the little strap that connects it to the um, big belt around her chest. As well as that, we also want to be uh, doing the belts around her um, boots as well, making sure that we be pretty careful and pick out a brush with a nice fine point since those uh, leather straps are very, very close together and very small on detail as well. So choosing a finer brush is going to help out with that a little bit more. Then once we have those leather straps picked out, we're going to come in now with some khaki. And what we're going to be doing with khaki, we're only going to be using it in two small places. We're just going to be painting up this little pouch on the side of her waist. And as well as that, we're also going to be doing the leather sort of wrapping she has around her uh, big staff that she's holding as well. Just, just down by her hand, she has some uh, wrappings around it, and I'm going to be doing those in khaki as well. Then with those few little details picked out, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown. And mahogany brown, what we're going to be doing is we're going to give her a nice mahogany staff. So, of course, we want to be painting the staff itself. Now, remember, there is our uh, spell effects, as you can see on here. Maybe a little bit hard since they're see-through. It might be a little bit hard to see on camera. Um, but she has some spell effects coming off her staff. So we want to be avoiding those spell effects and just being painting out the wooden part of the staff. As well as there's a big sort of like crystal orb in the center of her staff, we want to be avoiding that as well. Then once we have our staff painted up, we're going to come in now with some grey blue. And grey blue we're going to be using for a majority of the miniature here. And this is, of course, painting up a huge, big flowing cloak that she's wearing on her. It's going to really help pop out the piece of this nice uh, grey, greyish blue colour. is going to really help tie the uh, purple and the browns that we've got together and give a nice visual interest to the piece. And of course, we just want to make sure we're giving that a nice overall base coat, especially since there's a lot of folds and waves. You want to make sure you really get that brush in there and get in between all those little nooks and crannies. Then we have a nice cape all painted up. We're going to come in now with some dark stone. And dark stone is a, a brownish sort of gray color. So it's going to be the color for her hair. Now remember, hair color, you can make it whatever color you want. I'm just going with a 
nice uh, dark hair color since we've got a really light uh, grayish skin color for her actual flesh itself so a nice dark tone will help sort of frame the face a little bit better and then once we have that complete we're going to come in now with some retributor armor and we're going to be using this for some of the uh, nice bits of jewelry on her model herself um, she has a belt buckle she also has this nice sort of uh, band around her chest area uh, the buckles of her boots and her hair clip she has as well we want to be giving those all a nice coat of our uh, gold color and it's going to really help make the piece stand out from a distance then once we have those areas all picked out we're going to come in now with some hydra turquoise and our hydra turquoise what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up her orb slash gem in the middle of her staff um now the <laughs> hydra turquoise looks a lot more blue on camera than it does uh in actual life but remember it's a magical gem it could be whatever color you want it to be but i'm going with the hydra turquoise for this then once we've painted up that gem in the middle of her staff we're going to come in now with some purple tone and we want to be of course placing it on top of everywhere we've got the purple to help enrich that purple and really give it that extra bit of punch and it's going to really of course help the shadowed areas as well by giving that little bit darker tone in there too so being careful where we place it you can see i'm using a lot smaller brush to place this uh, wash in here to help get into those areas without accidentally getting it in other places then once that purple tone's all dry we're going to come in now with some agrax earth shade and for our Agrax Earthshade, we want to be placing it everywhere that's basically brown or darkish color. So that's the rest of her, pretty much the rest of her clothing, except for the cape. We want to be leaving the cape alone. We're going to be doing that in a different wash. And we also want to be avoiding the skin as well. But we want to give a nice overall color. Oh, as well as that, we also want to be avoiding those gold parts as well. Just keeping uh, aware of that because we're going to come in with a different wash to help accentuate that gold color. Okay, we're trying something a little bit different here. I'm going to be grabbing my blue tone and I'm going to be using it on her flesh as well. So we used uh, Rekas flesh, which is a very uh, grayish flesh color. And I'm going to be using this blue tone here to give it a wash and give it some blue color in the shadows because I wanted to give it that look that she is definitely not human. She is something else since Asimara are an angelic sort of uh, being i wanted to switch up the colors a little bit now, i don't know exactly how this is going to go but it's just an experiment so if you're if you don't want to do this you can easily go with ordinary uh, flesh wash as well and of course we want to wash her cape as well in the blue tone so don't forget about that when you're doing the skin okay then once our blue wash is dried we're going to come in now with some reckland flesh shade and reckland flesh shade we want to be placing over all those golden areas to really help pick out that nice golden color give it that warmth and really give off that golden shine look so of course it's just a matter of going over our golden areas you can see i'm using a lot thinner brush to do this so i'm just picking out the gold then once i've picked out those gold areas we're going to come back in now with some rakath flesh and of course we want to be using it on the highlights now i have uh, thinned down the rakath flesh a little bit more than i usually do um, to try and make it a little bit more even on transitions so sort of like two parts water to one part of the actual paint and i'm just going over in those high points in the area so that blue is going to be nicely in the recessed shadow areas i'm not sure how it's going to look out so you have to definitely check in for the final shots to see how it came out but it's going to be an interesting little experiment for me then once we've gotten those skin all highlighted up we're going to come in now with some grimoire purple again and again it's just doing the same thing hitting those high points so She's got her arm pointed out so of course we want to hit the top of that really get that bright color of the grimoire purple back in there since we've deepened it down with that purple so it's going to really help in those areas you can see there's a lot of tricky small areas to get to so i've just come in with a fine point on my brush and really trying to be as careful as i can and focus on to those high points then once we have that complete we're going to come back in now with our gray blue and we want to highlight our robe of course that she's wearing or her cloak and again there is a like i said before when we're applying the wash there's a lot of hills and valleys and nooks and crannies in this cloak since it's billowing behind her so it's not too bad to pick out those really high points since it's got some of those nice uh, really deep hills and valleys and it's just a matter of going along i'm seeing 
see I'm using more the side of my brush than the actual tip of my brush to go along and pick out these areas uh, that are in the highest points. And it's just a matter of going around the whole uh, model looking for these areas and being careful not to get paint where you don't want it to be. Then once we have that complete, we're going to come back in now with some Retributor armor. And again, grabbing a nice fine tip brush. And it's just a matter of picking out all the edges and the raised points on the our gold detail so we can get that nice shining gold back into the actual gold itself and of course we want to make sure that we're not getting metallics in places where we don't want it as well then once we've done all that we're going to come into our effects on the miniature so coming in with some nylock oxide and the nylock oxide i'm going to be using for the magic on her staff it's going to hopefully tie in a little bit with our hydra turquoise we have with our gemstone so it looks similar and it's also going to help match in with all the rest of our colors here but being different enough that it's going to catch the eye on the actual piece with all the magic coming off of that stuff and having that nylock oxide which is a bluey greenish color it's still going to tie in with the all the colors of the, our miniature itself and then once we've done that, I'm going to come in with a really bold statement onto our wings with some and yellow. And I'm going to be doing them as holy, angelic, sort of uh, radiant, magical effect rather than paint them up like actual wings. I'm doing them more of a spiritual sort of radiance, uh, like how I feel they are in uh, actual D&D. This sort of a, this very magical apparition that pops up and gives you this temporary flight rather than having them come out and be actual angelic sort of wings this is totally up to you but this is going to be a nice striking piece on the table and really help set it apart so you can see that magical angelicness of the actual piece And there we go guys, with all that finished, we've now finally finished painting up our female Azamar wizard from the Dungeons and Dragons WizKids range. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along, or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.